Ryan with Ms. Dog Geek here, and today we are looking at step 2.14 on the QDX, and that is installing all of these connectors on the QDX. So the first one I'm going to start with is, I think, the most difficult one, which is this. Now, the reason I find these difficult is because they don't like to line up, number one. You can see it's kind of, the, the leads are a little bit off. Number two is that you really got to get some heat into these anchors. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this in here. So I'm going to just try for one at a time, maybe bend them even a little bit uh, before you, uh, you get them aligned outside of trying to put it in. Okay, there we go. And my method for these, okay, I'm try to support this here because it wants it to be 90 degrees exactly if you can. My method for these is solder and press down on it and hold should be good there and there now What I'm going to do with this to make sure that it's flush, I'm going to press down on it slightly as I solder it with the uh, piece, this BNC connector supported just by something to, so that gravity basically, the, the fulcrum is here, the pivot point is here. So when you press down on it ever so slightly, you're actually pressing these into the board. So. I'm just gonna warm some solder into this and it should be a piece of cake, hopefully. There we go, that was easy. Oh yeah, that was easy. And I have to admit, with this soldering iron, I've got to turn it to 380 there. Um, that's the easiest it's been. This is a 90 watt soldering iron and, um, that's easier than I've, yeah, I think the last one I had was 60 watt. This one maintained a temperature when I, um, um, when I held here. So I think it actually, I mean, I, I'm not watching the amperage. I don't know how many amps it was pulling, but how many watts it was pulling from the plug. But I noticed that the, it heated these up a lot faster without me having to crank the temperature up, which was really nice guys all right next one the same kind of method we're gonna just get this on here and it does say the connector body should not protrude protrude beyond the edge of the pcb so for this one it could easily protrude past so what we're going to do is again when you use just something to just hold it there without it protruding. And I'm just gonna solder one in and hope that that works okay. Check it, because it's really easy to position if you're only soldering, you're repositioning one connector, or one uh, solder here. And I'm not filling this whole thing with solder. I don't think that's necessary, at least not at this point. So now, get it straight. And it is not flush, so I'm going to warm this up a little bit. There we go. It's not straight either. Yes, I did just touch my thumb. Okay. And try to get that I'm trying to get this straight here. Okay, what do we think here? I think that's pretty straight and it's also flush. Doesn't cover it, go over the edge. So now let's go ahead and solder up. The other two. Did 
I'm going to get a fair bit of solder into at least one of them because that is going to be a mechanical stress point. So now I can go back and just, since it's aligned, go ahead and add a fair bit, I guess. Yeah, that was easy. And there's no need to fill them. I've not filled them on, on the others. I don't think I did on the QCX Mini either. Okay, there's that. Now in the last one, is the USB connector. And the USB connector, it's got these uh, four connections here and then these two mechanical ground connections here. Um, so four electronic and one and two mechanical. So we'll just pop that in. And that holds it. That one pretty much aligns itself. So we'll just carefully solder it in. And you don't want to dwell on these too long because these are pretty tiny things. And boy, they heat up quick. Wow. And get the groundlet lugs on. I'm running out of some solder here. I'll grab a longer piece for this one. Okay. All right. And there's the connectors. Um, I don't think it gets easier than that, fellas. I'm liking it. This is coming right along. So the next step is going to be install the 220 um, microfarad power supply capacitor, which I am going to include in this video because this video right now is, well, actually this is at seven minutes long. I'm gonna stop it here. So we'll stop here. The next installment will be the capacitor. So stay, stay tuned.